Okay, today I'm going to try to redo my uh, use of Box, which is a PC emulator that runs inside your computer. So uh, if you've heard of the term virtualization, uh, that's what this entails. Uh, this Box program, the first thing I should cover is how you install it. And you just go to the Ubuntu Software Center, type the word Box up at the top. And you want to make sure that you have these four uh, different things installed. The IA32 PC emulator, which is labeled box below it. The BIOS, which is called Box BIOS. Box X, which is the X11 plugin in WX Windows. Don't ask me, that's what you need to get to work. If it says remove over there, it means you already got it installed with the green check. If it doesn't, click on install. It'll take like a minute. It doesn't. These are really small programs, but they have a lot of power to them. Okay, so we're out of that. Now what i got to do is i got to set up box. And so I'll just start from scratch. And when you first run it, you have to run it from the terminal. So if I get it in the camera right, just type the word box, but it's spelled B-O-C-H-S instead of B-O-X. And what I want to do is I want to edit my options. And it gets a little technical. You have to understand a little bit about hardware, and you have to understand their own little language they use here. But uh, the first thing I want to deal with is the hard disk. And so I'm going to go into 10, which is disk options. And I'm going to give my little simulated computer a, uh, a disk cable. It could have up to two connections. And that's called ATA channel 0. So Three and press enter to accept it's enabled. Accept the IRQ, and then I, now I have a cable in my computer uh, virtually. Okay, now I'm going to put up a hard disk on that. So I go with four to, for the first hard disk. I'm going to type yes to enable it. If I were press enter, it would be no, it would be a waste of time. I'm going to say it's a disk, and I'm going to give it a file name. I already have a hard disk prepared with BX image, and I guess I'll show you how I did that. In fact, I'll remake it. So I have to make a hard disk image for this virtual computer to use to install the operating system on. And the program BX image comes with uh, your uh, box that you download and install from Ubuntu. And all you do is type BX image, and it says, what do you want? You want a virtual floppy disk or hard disk? I want a hard disk, so I'll press enter, because that's already chosen. And I want a flat file that I know what the size is going to be and ain't going to get any bigger, so I'll stick with flat. And the size I'll go with is 500 megabytes. So I'll type 500. I'll call it d.image because I already have a c.image that I don't want to damage. Okay. And it says that it already exists. And sure, I'll go ahead and replace it. It won't do that to you if that's the first time you set it up. Okay. So now it's going to ask me what's the name of the file name that is going to be my virtual hard disk? Why well, I just made it. It's got it's called d.img. And I press enter and it still is a flat file. It just wants to know I set it up as a flat, but it wants to know what it is in this case. So I'm responding yes as a flat. Then I have to know the number of cylinders, sectors and heads of this virtual hard disk and I already have that on my cheat sheet here. But it told me that when I first when I ended uh, setting up BX image. So it's got cylinders 1015, heads 16, sector 63. So I'm going to put in 1015 for cylinders. I'm going to put in um, 16 heads and 63 sectors. And I don't care about the name. Generic's fine. Automatic BIOS detection's fine. That's good. Now I'm going to give my computer a CD so I can install the React OS operating system <laughs> just to see how it works uh, onto this little hard disk that I've made that is resting in my home directory now. And so I'm going to set up the second ATA channel, which is be another one of these cables. I could use the first ATA channel, but it'll be a master slave situation, and that is slower. I don't know if I do that in virtual reality, but in real life it's that way, so I'm just going to stick with it. So six. And channel is enabled, and put output address. I, again, I'm accepting the defaults. And then um, now I'm going to attach my CD to it. 
uh, the second ATA channel that I've set up and I'm going to say the device is yes it is enabled and the type is going to be CD-ROM now uh, since I want to use my actually want to use my not a virtual CD because I don't have to make a CD image instead I want to use my CD-ROM drive I am going to actually use the name of the device for the CD for the CD in this Linux system and that is dev CD-ROM in this case if you're doing this say in NetBSD it may have a different device name for the CD if you're doing FreeBSD again they're all they're all different and the media is certainly prime, yes it is. And model, I don't care. BIOS detection, I don't care. So I'm done with my disk options. I'll return to the previous menu. And now I'm going to do my network options just so I, will, uh, so I can network with it just to see if it's able to handle it. Um, it'll uh, connect to my own computer's loopback device. And then from there, it'll uh, go out. And if there's a browser in this thing, I'd be able to browse the web. And I'm gonna, the default uh, network card they give is uh, an NE2000. I'm not sure what device it is, but I think it's a 10100. I'll go ahead and enable it. And I'll go ahead and enable the emulation. And I will refer to the previous menu. So I have what I need here. And uh, so I have a hard disk. I have a key, keyboard's going to work. Mouse is going to work if I enable it. I don't want to enable it just yet because it gets you have to get to the point where you can shut your virtual computer down before you you do anything. Uh, before, you know, if you don't have a mouse, you, know, you you can't really use it to close the window. It's hard to explain, but basically, until such time as my operating system is able to handle a mouse, I, I I'm not going to enable it. And for sound, I guess I can give it a sound card. Why not? Uh, go ahead and enable the emulation. Yes, and I'm not sure what MIDI mode is or DMA timer is. I'm just going to go back. It's enabled. I might have to deal with that later. So I can also uh, control the speed at which this virtual uh, operating system runs. And when I was working on NetBSD that I'd set up yesterday, I'd try to just log in, and so I type the word root. And we go R O O O O T, <laughs> you know. So I have to slow down the amount of CPU power that this little computer is taking in some cases. It's really touch and go. You have to start it and stop it until you get it right, and so you can actually type something in, you know. Because this is this is a pretty powerful computer. It's got eight virtual processors in it, and can go pretty fast. So um, let's go down to this. It's going to ask me uh, the IPS is what I care about most and it's going with 40 as a default I found NetBSD that about half of that was a little slow so I'm gonna go with 25 on this just for and that's got three zeros uh, six zeros so I'm gonna go with 25 and five zeros and I don't it's saying it's an AMD okay whatever um, that's fine and then I will go up and now I'm going to save my options, otherwise I'm going to lose my work. And since I've already renamed BoxRC, I'm going to call this thing BoxRC. That's what it looks for when it first starts. Now I could begin my simulation, but I don't know unless I look at my... I haven't set my boot order, have I? So let's edit these options one more time. I have to set. I want to make my CD-ROM boot before my hard drive. Otherwise, it'll just say no operating system found. Uh, it's got to be under disk options, and so boot options is 15. And I want my first boot drive to be. I want to edit that, and I want that to be CD-ROM. And my second boot drive, I want to be my hard drive. And in this case, even it says hard drive, it, it's looking for the word disk. I found out yesterday. And then that should be it. I'm going to go back and I'm going to save this thing again. I'm going to keep pressing enter to go up because 
Uh, that's what it says it's going to do. By default, it's not four. So you remember, push four. And um, yes, I'm going to go right back to the box RC. I'm going to, yes, I'm going to overwrite it. Glad it asks. OK, now I'm going to begin my simulation. I have the React OS uh, CD in there. And I don't know how much time I've got here. But you know what? Just to be safe, I'm going to stop and then um, start again on the next one.